further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce um, what I'll call the, the CFO, the Chief Fiscal Officer of the, the state of Maryland. Uh, Comptroller um, Francho uh, was elected to that position in, in 2006. And prior to that, he, he had spent 20 years in the General Assembly um, from the represented Montgomery County area. Um, so he brings a deep knowledge of the, inner, the workings of, of the financial mechanism of the state of Maryland and has been very instrumental in, in working with small businesses over his whole uh, elected tenure and particularly now with uh, the challenges we're all facing with, uh, with COVID and, and moving forward to the recovery. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Comptroller Franchow. Thank you very much, Mark, uh, and good luck uh, with your golf tournament. I understand you're having something coming up in May. That'll be uh, indeed. You don't want me out there playing golf with you. Just uh, FYI, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a I would love to be a good golfer, but I'm not. But uh, let me <clears throat> follow uh, Sharon's uh, and encourage people to uh, put her contact information in. Uh, we pride ourselves in our 1150 person agency uh, to be all about the three R's. That's respect the taxpayer, respond to the taxpayer, get results for the taxpayer. I insist that all phone calls are answered within 60 seconds. And it is a fireable offense for any of my employees to, or the employees of the comptroller's office to not abide by the three R's. Uh, we do not consider there anything exists like a Democratic tax return or a Republican tax return. And uh, I think we've followed through on that. We uh, process 3.2 million tax returns a year. We've done well over a million in this tax season. Uh, we get refunds back within 2.1 business days. The legislature and the governor passed a relief plan that required us to mail out 460,000 relief uh, payments. Uh, they did it at the same time that they started the, at the start of the tax season. It was just coincidental. So it all came in at the same time. It took us three days to put all of those payments into people's back pockets or into the United or into the U.S. Postal Service, the mail. So a long winded way of saying we're all about government competence. We're all about uh, making sure that people have some confidence that the government can actually do something uh, for them. So uh, I don't mean to pound away on that, but I think that that uh, experience and, and uh, track record for, for customer service, it's nothing foreign to you guys. You're all in the private sector. Uh, you understand that. On the public side, sometimes we lose track of it. And uh, I emphasize it a lot. And it's been, I think the one of the reasons why I've been successful over the last 14 years as comptroller. So uh, my cell phone number, personal cell phone number, I carry it with me everywhere I go. So in addition to Sharon, you obviously, if you have government matters, tax issues, et cetera, Sharon can put you in touch with the right staff person. But if you see something that I should be aware of, uh, feel free to text me or voicemail me, or if you're in my contact list, I'll, I'll answer it. But <laughs> if you have a pencil, the number is 301 area code 332-1961. That's 301-332-1961. The revenue estimates for the state, we can go into that if people have questions, have been relatively stable uh, given the uh, earlier predictions that we made that the pandemic was going to cause a lot of uh, disruption in the state's economy and a big decrease in state tax revenues. That did not occur. Why has it not occurred? Uh, it's occurred a little bit, and we can talk about that if you want. But essentially, the federal government has allocated $4.5 trillion in the last year, the most recent, including the most recent stimulus plan. $4.5 trillion. That's 4.5 followed by 12 zeros. It is a lot of money. Uh, that proved to be a life preserver for the state's economy last summer, uh, particularly the paycheck, uh, paycheck Protection Plan, I think it's called, where uh, the federal government pumped money into private sector businesses to pay employees that either were or were not working. 
And I was a little skeptical of that, but boy, uh, it did it. It certainly it's the it's the reason why we've had more more or less stable tax revenues uh, regard uh, over the last uh, you know year, and it's proven to be uh, enormously helpful. And cha I've changed my mind a little bit about spending a lot of money during a depression. So uh, forty five to fifty billion of that free money printed in a basement in Washington. Washington rained down on Maryland. I mean, it's like a river of money was rolled in. I mean, $50 billion in federal stimulus money coming to the state and to the private sector in Maryland. That's almost three times what I collect in a year in income tax and sales tax combined. So it's, it's an extraordinary impact. This is the Stimulus last summer, the one in December, and now the so-called uh, American Rescue Plan, which I think has got a new title, which is 1.9 trillion in relief. Why do I encourage people to be supportive of that? Obviously, it's got some risk. If there's inflation and interest rates at the end of the year, and if the stock market uh, wobbles, uh, and uh, we could be we could be in a situation that we regret because uh, 4.5 trillion being pumped into the nation's economy, uh, you know, it's un uncharted territory. Put it that way. I hope it all works out. The second uh, ingredient for a successful uh, economy at the end of this year is obviously controlling the the virus, and the variants are very. Mm -hmm concerning to me because uh, politically we're Democrats or Republicans, we keep trying to prematurely open everything up. And that's because we wanna, you know, we're sick of being, of seeing folks uh, restricted because of uh, public health issues. And we want to uh, make people happy. And we wanna particularly like voters to vote for us. So we're constantly adjusting things and it's caused tremendous confusion and frustration and anger among our citizens. It's because we can't deliver uh, right now on a safe Maryland because we're still struggling with the vaccine rollout and there are variants out there that we simply have to pay attention to. So let's assume for a moment that the variants and the virus is controlled and by September, uh, a lot of people are vaccinated in the state of Maryland. That then could lead to reasonable opening of schools and some reopening of businesses. And it would lay the groundwork for in November, December of this year, something akin to the roaring 20s where the economy takes off like a rocket. I think it's 50-50 whether we get that or whether we get some because the economy has been so sugar as it got this sugar high of all this money that we end up with higher interest rates and uh, you know, a, a riskier situation as far as inflation. But let's assume the positive. I think that uh, better days obviously lie ahead, even if there is some uh, negative response to the huge amount of stimulus money. Um, which I fervently hope there won't be. But if there is some, we can get through that also. The main thing is we've got to control the virus and you've got to stop nodding your heads. We're all nodding our heads every time the governor stands up and gives a press conference. You know, there's something different every time. And uh, I, I just wish the customer service culture in my agency was evident in all the other state agencies because uh, the unemployment payments have been a debacle. We've given, you know, we are the distributors of federal unemployment combined with state unemployment, but it goes through our agency and the agency has been completely overwhelmed by inadequate infrastructure, inability to answer the phone and they've caused just huge problems and, and uh, because of that, a lot of people have not been able to get unemployment payments and fraudsters have had a field day. We're, you know, I know it's a lot of the unemployment money is federal uh, money, but it's still taxpayers' money. And we estimate $500 million has been paid to fraudsters in unemployment claims from stolen financial identities. 
and then they file for unemployment. Why am I a little sensitive? Well, a month ago, my staff came and said, gee, uh, someone named Peter Francho just applied for unemployment. And uh, we've fortunately, since we checked and you're still employed, uh, Mr. Comptroller, we did not send out a $7,000 check in your name to someone's credit, someone's debit card who would file for you. Well, unfortunately, uh, there were a lot of payments made to that were not stopped. And we estimate 500 million in taxpayers' money was allocated to, was sent, unfortunately, to fraudsters. It's not that I'm blaming the good intentions of the folks at the uh, Department of Labor. I'm just saying that the infrastructure and the fraud detection awareness and the uh, ability to get money in rightful pockets to people who deserve it and need it, that just wasn't there. And I don't care how many press conferences you have. I don't care how many times you get up and say, we're better than other states. Uh, we did not, we dropped the ball. And we've done it, frankly, as far as the vaccine distribution, although that's getting better. And, uh, you know, I've already commented on the back to school stuff. It's, uh, you know, uh, it, first it's one day, it's this, and the next day it's something else. And, uh, you know, it goes on and on. So uh, if uh, I sound a little negative about government, I'm just not suggesting that there weren't big challenges. Uh, I just, I'm suggesting that we didn't, we didn't step up and meet the task at the federal level or the state level. And we continue to kind of um, go back and forth with our uh, uh, pronouncements. Having said that, uh, I think the economy has strong economic bones. I think uh, the fact that two thirds of the economy has not been affected by uh, the pandemic financially, uh, many of us are getting paid, we're working remotely, we still have health care, uh, we have money in our accounts, we're not, you know, we're stir crazy, but we're not desperate financial straits. One third of the state is in the deepest recession since the 1930s, and that's the low wage earners who work in the hospitality sector. And that's who I have been suggesting, both them and their employers, the restaurants and hotels and uh, performance areas, I've suggested that they need a specific amount of stimulus just in order to survive. And uh, I emphasize that, the, uh, that we have two Maryland's. Uh, one is two thirds of the economy, we're okay. The other one third is really up the creek without a paddle. And uh, we need to at least be sensitive to that. I certainly am because, uh, you know, there's a lot of suffering out there. And what we don't want to have is the recession in the bottom one third to begin to spread to the other two thirds. That would be just unimaginably bad. And uh, there's a certain risk there. Okay, let me just conclude and I'd, I'd be very interested what people have to say. And you certainly don't have to take my opinions as things that you agree with, because I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of pent up uh, frustration out there. I will say that I've recently asked that the 45 to 50 billion in federal dollars that came to the state that we need an independent commission of fiscal experts established with statute with uh, subpoena power and staff. No politicians allowed to review all of the federal money that came in, to see whether it went to people and businesses who actually needed it, to see how much fraud there was, if any, uh, involved, and to make sure that there was not gouging of the uh, federal or state treasuries by uh, companies that were just taking advantage of the pandemic. I, I say that not because I'm uh, against the relief, I say, say it, I just think we need it for transparency and accountability. And, uh, you know, I hope that that, that is uh, done. Let me just conclude briefly with tax stuff because we ex I extended, uh, I have the authority to do it. Again, this year, the state income tax and sales tax filings that are uh, due on April 15th, they're not due until July 15th. So that's a 90 day interest-free loan from the state of Maryland. If you pay your 
uh, taxes that are owed us on July 15th, there will be no interest and no penalties. All of that will be waived. And you get to use that money as a cushion. Uh, and that is obviously much appreciated. The IRS uh, delayed theirs until May 17th. So we didn't, we're not coupled. Last year, they went with us and did it for 90 days. This year, they're only doing it for 30 days. But um, you know, you need to be aware that as far as filing your state returns, you're okay. For those uh, of you who are in contact with people who want to subtract the uh, or take advantage of the fact that unemployment insurance, uh, you know, have, has been exempted from taxation by the governor, <clears throat> and I think approved by the legislature, those forms are not ready, and they won't be ready until. Uh, you should wait until July 15th to file if you want to subtract uh, the any unemployment claims that you have because uh, you know we we can't we we normally need six to eight months of advance notice to change our software so that we could process, for example, the new state exemption for uh, taxation of unemployment. We we need six to eight months to do that. It's not just us; the private sector. TurboTax and everybody, they need time to adjust things. This time it all happened at once simultaneously. So both the feds and us are, are suggesting that you file a minute, you either be patient and wait until May for the federal and July for the state, or uh, you file an amended return uh, if you, you insist upon uh, going ahead on, on uh, April 15th. So uh, we are also, uh, there were big changes made to the earned income tax credit. Uh, so anyone who's interested in that, we, you can go to MarylandTaxes.gov and we have a separate uh, portal set up for folks that are going to benefit from an expanded earned in income tax credit. That uh, is a program that is a federal state partnership. Happy to take other questions about uh, taxes uh, whenever I, go to my accountant and start talking taxes, he generally says to me, hey, Peter, could you stop complaining? You're making money, you're doing okay. So uh, yes, I'm happy to take anybody's complaints, uh, but I think we have to recognize that we're blessed to be in the greatest country in the history of the world. The United States of America is just, you know, it's a, it's a unique, weird, quirky system that we have called free enterprise and capitalism. It actually works and the rule of law is so important, but you know, we, we have something that no other country has, which is an economy that um, has a certain genius to it, I guess is the way I describe it. It has flaws. I know people are left out. I know there's a lot of inequity. I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't reform it, but boy, um, hats off to all you who are able to succeed in the uh, capitalist system that we have. It's a, well, it's not even, it's half socialist, half capitalist, I guess, but it's a phenomenal system. And I think we need to realize that as we go through all of these transitions. Let me stop, Mark, I've rambled on. I didn't mean to uh, do that, but, you know, I'm always, I always learn more things from your questions than I do from my statements, obviously. No, that was, uh, presentation was great and, and right on the mark uh, for things that I think the group and the chamber members want to uh, hear about and, and get that update. Um, so now let's kind of turn it over. Who uh, has a, wants a first question here for the, the comptroller? I have a, I have a question. Um, I was unemployed as well. I received an unemployment um, fraudulent mail, email or, or letter. And, and I think our company probably has about five of them that came in. And I know you don't have control over that. Um, we've reached out to the unemployment and, and we've, we're not getting very reasonable responses to that. But it, the question I have for unemployment is how long do you think that the extensions are going to occur I mean, it doesn't affect our business, but when I'm out and talk to other business owners, I find a lot of the um, challenges they're currently facing is they can't find people that want to come to work because they're um, making more 
you know, with the stimulus checks and the extensions of unemployment. So how long do you think that these extensions of unemployment will, will last? I know it's a federal issue, but I'd like to get your input on that. Well, I, uh, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, uh, I get a lot of it from my more conservative supporters who look at me and say, uh, you know, this relief is subject to waste, fraud, and abuse. I'm happy to take a look at, at the accounting of all the money because I think obviously the Department of Labor does not have adequate infrastructure. They certainly don't have adequate fraud detection set up. Uh, we have it in the comptroller's office, so it's not, you know, impossible to do, but it takes years to build it up. We have uh, established uh, algorithmic filters that all the tax returns go through. So, you know, we have, I, I don't want to say we have very little fraud, but we have a lot less tax fraud than uh, other states have. And we're known uh, partly that as the top uh, agency in the country, tax a administration agency, as far as fraud detection. And, but it, don't, it doesn't happen by chance. You have to hire people, you have to train them, you have to have protocols in place and you have to test it and test it and test it. And the thieves and the crooks are constantly innovating. It's, uh, it's just that knock on wood, uh, they'd rather go to, if they had a choice to uh, rip off Pennsylvania and Delaware than Maryland, because Maryland would generally block them. Not always, I mean, it's not perfect, but unfortunately that's what we need. As far as the extensions, I think it depends on the virus. If the virus is under control, by, by September and the vaccinations have been made, I think that the government can reasonably take their foot off the relief. But, uh, you know, the virus is very, you know, mother nature is hard to, uh, I don't, I don't wanna make mother nature mad by saying we've conquered the virus prematurely. We need to have the vaccinations and we need to make sure that the variants are not a problem. Once that happens, I think you could back off some of the stimulus relief that's been provided. I happen to think that people, at least the people that I interact with, want to work. They want to contribute. They want to be around other people. They do not want to rip off state government by sitting at home, uh, smoking cigarettes, drinking booze, and basically doing nothing. No, that's not what motivates most people. I know it's probably an easy, you know, kind of mythological thing we can, you know, gripe about government on uh, promoting laziness or something. I don't think that's the case. Uh, it may be there in some people, but we, we had a million people file for first time unemployment a year ago. That's like just, I mean, we lost 440,000 jobs in two days, in two months. And, uh, you know, that, that wasn't people's fault. That was just what was going on. And I think it's a, you know, although I kind of like, uh, I don't have bare feet, but I could have bare feet on this uh, Zoom call that I'm sitting on right now. I kind of like that flexibility, but uh, I think most people want to get back to work and they want to do something that is uh, social and constructive. But uh, so I, I kind of just uh, brush by those concerns that I hear that uh, really people are gaming the system. I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist and everybody knows somebody who's taking, abusing something, but uh, um, I would suggest that most people would really, really like to get back to work, particularly in the hospitality sector where, which is where a lot of the damage has been done. Thank you, good question. But I, I see a limited amount. I mean, these, this uh, stimulus money is only acceptable in my mind if it's, one, if it's limited in time. I mean, I'm not talking about making uh, this federal uh, stimulus money permanent. We, that, would, that would ruin the economy. So we need, we need to understand it more like a capital investment one time only. And once again, uh, it, it's because we're in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the virus right now that we need to make sure. I don't know about you guys, but 
there is absolutely no way I'm going to downplay uh, the risk that people have on this virus. I mean, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy because it's so unpredictable. You know, somebody I talked to yesterday said uh, he had a mild case of uh, coronavirus and he's still suffering from it months later. I'm not saying the data backs me up necessarily on that. I'm just saying uh, human nature, I think, is uh, we're just not going to go back to comfortably opening things up until uh, the federal infection rate is national federal uh, national infection rate is less than 10,000 for an extended period of time. And once it's there, that means we're more or less on top of it. But uh, people are not, people are very intelligent and uh, you know, they didn't stop, the economy didn't lock down, it didn't, it wasn't the lockdown that stopped the economy. The economy last year stopped in March and April before the lockdown. Why? Because people said, hell no, I'm not going out there. I'm not going into work. I'm not doing it because frankly, back then it was a, it was a real, uh, you know, it was a very scary pandemic. I think some of that still exists, and uh, I'm optimistic that uh, come September we'll be on top of it. Thank you. Um, we question. have time for just one more what? question. Oh, well, we can stay for a few minutes if, okay. if you want to. Uh, Sharon, th I don't mean to contradict you, Kat, Sharon, but <laughs> I'm so garrulous, I guess, that I've uh, either bored people or driven them off. But uh, if you, if there is a a second question, I'm happy to take it, but yeah, I, we do have to get going. Anyone like, who ha has something? Yeah. Uh, uh, so something I'd like to point out and get your opinion on. So uh, Rundle Mills, we're proud of Simon, publicly traded company. Um, as you noted, um, we were closed down for 25% of last year. Uh, yeah, we continue, continue to pay our bills. We continue to pay our taxes, et cetera. Um, while retail has changed over the past several decades dramatically with the uh, e-commerce um, development, um, e-commerce was a huge beneficiary of COVID. Now, bricks and mortar are going to respond and are going to come out strong, I firmly believe. Um, however, one thing that I want you to understand and um, you know, we're talking uh, this, this subject across the country, um, you know, bricks and mortar, your traditional mom pops, malls, um, any bricks and mortar retail is assessed from a property perspective based on a number of factors, one of which includes the performance of the property. Um, and as, as you know, we're assessed for three year periods and then uh, get reevaluated every third year. Um, however, e commerce doesn't necessarily get assessed in that manner. The formulas are different. And it's because it's a new product, relatively speaking. So, one of the things that I hope that um, all of our elected officials and our state officials look at over the next uh, several years is how those industrial sites that house the Amazons of the world are being assessed from a property perspective, because I believe that the state's leaving money on the table. There's clearly an unfair playing field if bricks and mortar are assessed differently than industrial space. So just something for you to think about. I know that's not necessarily uh, your wheelhouse, but something that I think we need to look at moving forward so that we can make sure the state is entitled to the taxes from the industrial properties where e-commerce sales are derived from. Well, that's an excellent point. I would like to get together with you if possible uh, offline and because uh, I'm a little uh, concerned in my own mind as to not so much your properties because they're outstanding uh, blue chip and Simon is a fabulous company but I am concerned about some of the other uh, commercial retail spaces around the state as to what exactly they're gonna look like. And uh, I do believe 
customers are coming back and that the bricks and mortar uh, malls like you like our and our, like Arundel mall are going to flourish because I just think people like to be out in those environments. Uh, once again, I go back to my view that people are social animals. I mean, we want to be with other people. Uh, we just want it to be safe. Uh, so I think there is a little bit too much doom and gloom about this. Uh, I do, uh, but I'm a, a little confused as far as some of the other commercial spaces around the state, uh, malls, I guess, that are not as uh, well-financed and capitalized as yours. And survival, I'm, not, I'm just not quite sure what the transition and survival is. If uh, I'm sorry, I was looking around because I had this wonderful person who was connected to Simon Properties. In fact, his name, he's one of the heirs to the company that for some reason I was in touch with. He's a fabulous guy. He may be the only Democrat in the Simon family. Uh, maybe that's why I got hold of him. But uh, uh, I'd love to get together on specifically on your situation, get your thoughts, the tax uh, stuff. I'm, I am not particularly concerned about the uh, tax revenues of the state of Maryland. We have extraordinarily strong economic bones. We're, we're blessed with the proximity and involvement of the federal government. I mean, we don't even know how many federal people work in Maryland. I mean, in, I think it's in Anna Rondol, the NSA. Yes, it is. Yeah, they may have 40,000 jobs that we don't even know, but people are paying tax on them. And uh, I guess I could find out if I looked, but you know, it's a top secret agency, so they're not allowed to tell who is going on, or who, who works where. So all I'm saying is Maryland is very well positioned to win the recovery. I'm a... Uh, I'm a big believer in not raising taxes, but uh, fair application of taxes, I call it. Uh, when the Supreme Court allowed me, the comptroller, to establish, to put the 6% sales tax on remote sales, I did it very quickly because I didn't see it as a new tax. I just saw it as a extension of the 6% sales tax that bricks and mortar stores have to collect. So maybe we could, uh, uh, and, and that was a very, very important cushion last year because it was last year was the first year was in effect and produced a considerable amount of tax revenue. But let's uh, get together if we could and perhaps talk about what, if anything, I could begin communicating about as far as, uh, you know, this discrepancy that you brought up because it's not going away. People are going to continue. Uh, I think post pandemic. And, uh, but once again, I am not concerned about the public budgets. I'm much more concerned about the private sector budgets right now and survival. And then, you know, I've told people in a somewhat kidding way that I will, my mother taught me how to do the Char Charleston, tried to, because I'm not very good at dancing, but she was terrific at it. She was a rosy riveter during World War II. And she, dance to Charleston like no one else. Well, I'm committed to go down to Main Street in Annapolis and dance to Charleston in November, if in fact the economy is coming back like the Roaring Twenties. So stay tuned on that and uh, be optimistic. And uh, Sharon, thank you for setting this call up. Mark, if there's one last question, I'm happy to take it and then I'll go. See any uh, one in the group have something for the comptroller? Thank you guys. You've got our contact information. So, uh, you know, be I put in the chat, um, I put in the chat, the comptroller cell number, and then my email is there. Um, by the way, comptroller, I'm happy to dance with you down main street when that happens. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at that. I can do that. Yeah, and I know well, all the mainstream merchants and restaurant tours would love to see you. And, and yeah. even if you don't have to dance. So come right. on down. <laughs> Anyway, uh, better days lie ahead. I mean, really, I think, we're, I think we're finally getting a little coordination at the federal level with the state level. And, you know, it's, we're, 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 it's all relatively unprecedented uh, uncharted borders, but I think uh, now we're headed in the right direction. Thank you.
great. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Yeah, all the best. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.